Hey Canucks fans, did Thatcher Demko throw a wrench into the Canucks' future plans for their goaltending situation? I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take on one take, it's Clay's Canucks commentary for Wednesday, September the 2nd. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. What a game last night, Vancouver wins 2-1, to one, although some people think it should be 3-1, to one, but the Canucks won 2-1 to one in Game 5, they stay alive, must win, do or die, all those things, they live to play at least another game, live to see at least another day, that game is tomorrow, Thursday night at 6.45pm. Had a great time on our live stream last night, understandably people in a very good mood, we went for an hour and 20 minutes, over 100 people on there most for most of the time, and it was uh, very positive, so thanks to everyone who joined me, and of course the big talking point was Thatcher Demko and his amazing, his amazing display, I believe it wound up to be a 42 save performance on 43 shots, or maybe it was 43 saves on 44, but I think it was 42 saves on 43 shots. Regardless, he was amazing. He only let one goal in, and that one was after Shea Theodore uh, deked three different guys, including Roussel, Sutter, and I think Fantenberg. Really nice move. Not sure what the kind of, how they got caught so flat-footed. Maybe it was at the end of a long shift. But yeah, Theodore with a really, really nice goal. And it was really nice that the Canucks answered just 24 seconds later with Brock Besser's goal um, off a wonderful uh, centering pass from JT Miller. Yeah, because that could have gone sideways pretty quick, right? Uh, Vegas was dominating play, and then they get the first goal. It would be very easy for the Canucks to sag their shoulders and say, oh, we're, this is going to be very hard to come back. But instead, they came back with a vengeance, like I said, scoring 24 seconds later. And Brock Besser had a wonderful game. His best game of the series is probably the best game all postseason with a goal and then an assist. He had an assist, a second assist on the Pedersen game-winning goal. Now, really quickly, I'll th- talk about Demko in a second, but really quickly, some people are saying, well, Bo, Hor- Bo Horvat should have scored. I mean, that goal should have counted. And it's interesting, on the clock on the TV, which, remember, is not necessarily the official game clock. They try their best to sync it, but it's not the actual game clock. On the clock on the TV, it showed that the puck crossed with 0.1 or 0.2 seconds left, but it clearly cl- uh, crossed the goal line before it hit zero. But then on the official game clock that we've seen, I've seen a couple pictures of, um, when it says uh, 0.0, the puck hasn't crossed the goal line yet. So I know some people had money riding on it, hopefully not too much. And it's interesting how a simple thing like that, um, Horvat doesn't care, but it's a simple thing like that, compounded with Horvat's leading the league in goals. So that would be another one, another postseason goal for him. Uh, it made for a very a dramatic in, um, you know, ending to the game. In fact, I actually paused off my uh, doing my post-game vlog for about a minute trying to figure out, it, was it a 2-1 score or a 3-1 score that I was going to be talking about. So it ended up being 2-1, and I don't anticipate that being changed. Let's focus on the one, i.e., Thatcher Demko only letting in one goal. Now, before the game, I tweeted, kind of sarcastically, but I, but I'm serious about it too. I said, I would love nothing more to have a goalie controversy after game five, you know, because I'd much rather have that than the alternative, alluding to the fact that if the Canucks win, then they're going to have to have this decision between Demko and Markstrom, and the alternative would have been the Canucks losing, which they didn't. So now here we are, after 42 save performance by Thatcher Demko, and I know a lot of people in my live stream last night were saying, um, you know, you got to go for Demko game six and then don't worry about game seven yet, even though it's a very important factor because game seven is a back-to-back if we get there, Thursday, Friday. And you, you think that Vegas is in a better spot to handle that back-to-back given that, uh, you know, they have two really um, number one goalies and you saw them split the back-to-backs on Saturday, Sunday, a big reason why they, they, they won both of those games. I said this when it came to Thatcher Demko. So let's talk about short term. Let's talk about long long term. I said this with, with respect to Thatcher Demko in Game Six. If Jacob Markstrom, this is what I was saying originally. I said if Jacob Markstrom is anything less than one hundred percent healthy, no brainer. You start Thatcher Demko because you need to win. Anything less than one hundred percent. However, if Markstrom is indeed one hundred percent, and you gotta trust him, you gotta trust the trainers, and you 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 hope that he's and I think he is, he's mature and smart enough to not lie about his health just so he can get into the game because that would hurt the team ultimately. If Markstrom is 100%, then originally I was saying you got to go with him. He's your number one, he's your MVP two, two years running and he's the guy who got you to the dance and he can make, he can have, he's had games just as good as Thatcher Demko last night. And that's what I was thinking, right? If Markstrom is 100%, start him in game six because I still think he gives you the best chance to win despite how good Demko played. But if he's anything less than 100%, don't play him. Play Demko. But, 
And then a lot of people agreed with me with that. But then I thought, well, what happens, though, if the Canucks win game six with Mark Schmidt net? Then what do you do for game seven? Then it comes a really, really big decision. And let's not talk about that maybe for a day or two. Uh, but if you, you instead start Demko in game six and then he wins it, because it's a back-to-back, you could argue if Markstrom's healthy, you play Markstrom and you're deciding game seven. And you thank Thatcher Demko for helping you get to that game seven. I don't know if you played Demko three three games and four nights. Although he's young, he's only 24 years old, as opposed to Markstrom, who's 30 years old. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, maybe Demko's got young legs. He hasn't really played um, in intense stretches for six months, right? He played eight and a half minutes in one of the St. Louis games, but that's it. So it, it's a really fascinating scenario. So I put that out on Twitter, and I basically asked, you, I, bas- I set it up like this. If Markey isn't 100% play Demko, yes, we all agree. But... If Markstrom is indeed healthy, 100% healthy for Game 6, who do you play? I have over 500 votes since I posted the question last night. And 72% are saying Thatcher Demko, play Demko in Game 6. And 28% are saying play Jacob Markstrom. And that surprised me initially because I was thinking, well, um, don't you want Jacob Markstrom in for your best chance to win? But not a lot, but a few of those respondents actually wrote back to me and said, yes, you play Demko in Game 6, but because it's back-to-back, then you have Markstrom ready for Game 7 and get some extra day's rest. And to me, that makes a lot of sense. So let's see what happens with, uh, with respect to the next day or two. I do think that a Markstrom isn't healthy at all. As I've said a few times already, you got to play Demko and then worry about Game 7 once you get to Game 7. However, the more fascinating thing will be if Markstrom is cleared as completely healthy, who do you play in Game 6? Do you go Demko and hope you win and go Markstrom in Game 7? Or do you go Markstrom and hope you win and go Demko in Game 7, which seems a little strange? Or I don't think you play Markstrom back-to-back, especially coming off a groin injury, even if it was uh, minor. And do you play Demko back-to-back? So obviously four scenarios. Demko twice, Mark- Markstrom twice, Markstrom, Demko, Demko, Markstrom. And maybe that's my next poll question if the Canucks win tomorrow night. But let's worry about that uh, tomorrow. Long term, as we know, Jacob Markstrom is a UFA at the end of the season, and he's 30 years old. Thatcher Demko has one more year left on his entry level contract, so we're getting him pretty cheap. Um, or it, it might not be his entry level, actually, now that I think about it, but he, uh, regardless, he's, he's still going to be an RFA at the end. So remember, Demko's 24, Markstrom's 30. All we've been hearing a lot, you got to sign Jacob Markstrom, and Jim Benning wants to sign Jacob Markstrom, blah, blah, blah. And it makes a lot of sense, right? He's our MVP for the last two seasons. But Imagine what a strong showing for Demko would do. It might give the Canucks pause in signing Jacob Markstrom to a long-term contract. And I've said this many times before. You could actually play hardball with Jacob Markstrom if Demko continues to show well in this postseason. And you could, it would take a lot of guts, but you could actually walk away from Markstrom and let him explore the free agent market. Because now you have that five, five and a half, six million, whatever he's going to be making. Now you have that freed up and you can improve your defense. Um, and then you bring in Demko as your starter, and then whether it's Domingue or you get a different goalie to back him up, that's another scenario. So it's very fascinating. I wouldn't have thought about this maybe a couple of months ago or when the season went on pause, because I wouldn't have thought. I, I was really, um, not blinded, but I, I think I was looking at definitely Jacob Markstrom as being the number one priority, and then you worry about Toffoli and Tanev and the other guys later. But imagine if Demko has another strong game like that, and uh, you can see on one hand, it's building up its trade value throughout the league. If you think you're going to lose in the expansion draft, and if you sign Markstrom as your number one, then you'll want to trade Demko for assets. But, you know, they have a whole year to worry about that. But that's an- another fascinating piece to this puzzle. So um, some would say, I don't want to commit four or five years to Jacob Markstrom at 30 years old. He's already breaking down now. Um, what's it going to be like in, in next year or in two or three or four years near the end of that contract? And do you want that much money sunk into a goalie who might be Um, on the other side of of the apex of his career. So many considerations. We haven't had to talk about a goalie controversy or goalie situation like this for a few years, but now we're in one, and it's good. It's good. It's a good thing. That means that everything's right in Canucks land, at least for one more day, and that means that we're talking about a Canucks win last night. So uh, I guess my question of the day right now, we will have plenty of time to talk about the long-term situation, but you can talk about that as well. Who would you start in game six? And does it matter to you if, if Markstrom is completely healthy or not? And if, if it makes it easier to answer the question, um, let's presume Markstrom is fully healthy. Who do you start in game six? And then maybe if you wanna, also want to answer as a question of the day is, um, does, does Demko's performance last night make you change at all? Or do you think it should make the Canucks change how they view their contract negotiations with Jacob Markstrom this offseason? So many cool questions, but it's a good thing that we're talking about this because that means that the Canucks won last night. So Canucks fans, leave a comment below. I love to read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you like to. 
Like this video if you like to. We're only 20 subscribers away from 5,000, which is pretty cool. Thank you for your support, loyal support on this channel. And yeah, stay safe, stay healthy. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Have a great day. God bless. And go Canucks go.